Hello, in this video we are going to be covering setting up our game over state. Because at the moment if I play and if I start running the game and let's say if I crash into this pipe, I die. But we can't restart it. It doesn't take us anywhere that shows us our current score apart from there. It doesn't show us a high score or any sort of achievements or anything that we've got. And we're going to be using the game over state that we've already created. One thing I do want to mention is I made a mistake a few videos ago when I was doing collision for the pipes and the mistake was this it, it sometimes works okay but sometimes due to the scaling it doesn't actually collide properly and the problem is I put scale 1 scale 2 should be scale 1 for sprite 1 should be scale 2 for sprite 2 so that will fix any problems that you would happen it was a bit temperamental that was my problem if you got the code from github you wouldn't have had this issue so let's get down to setting up our game over state and first of all go to definitions as usual and we've already created a game over background file path now what we're going to do is create a define for the game underscore over no not ruler over underscore title underscore file path so this is going to be the title and this will just say game over this will be called resources or it will point to resources res for slash game dash over dash title dot png copy and paste this and miss the quotation mark and this is game over body so this will be the main part where the score and the high score and any medals will appear and now this is game over body like so save that so now once we've got that done we can actually scroll down to the bottom we're going to add one more hash define and this will be the time before the game over appears because at the moment we flash white we don't want it to appear as soon as the game is over as soon as the player hits the ground or the pipes we want a certain amount of time so that you can see what's happened where they made the mistakes after the flash so this will allow us to do this so if you want less time just decrease it if you want more time just increase it and this is time before game underscore over appears and i'm going to put 1.5 f but again just feel free to experiment with this as you please so now what you want to do is go to your game state. Oh, I did not mean to open it like that. Actually, it's open now anyway. Might as well just do it in here. So go to, uh, no, you know what? I'll close this a little bit down instead of managing multiple windows. You know what happened there? Some of the code sort of disappeared. So if I go to game state.cpp, in here, what we want to do is scroll down to where we are actually checking for the collision over here. So at the moment, what we're doing is setting the game state to game over. We also need to do clock.restart. We'll be using the clock that we're using to spawn the land and the pipes. As the game is over, that clock is no longer used for spawning anymore. So we can just reuse the same clock. And if you do the same over here, so that's fine. The clock has been restarted. After we've checked for all of these collision stuff, after everything, still within this if statement right here, what we want to do, actually, am I in the right location? I'm just having a look. Nope, nope. My bad. It is actually literally everything. It's the last bit in this method. We're going to do if. So we're going to check if the game state, actually we've already got that check here, we've already got the check for if the game state is equal to game over, if so, flash it, that's fine. Then we're going to check if the clock dot get elapsed time dot as seconds, if that's greater than the time before game over appears, then we will using our state machine so machine dot add state we will do state ref so this is very similar stuff to what we've already done before we're going to be replacing the current state we have a new game over actually i need to include the game over state header so game over state header 
quote, quotation marks, scroll down to where we was doing the check. So game over state, and you just pass in the data. Final thing that we need to do is pass in true because we are replacing the current state with this new game over state. And that's actually it for the game state part. So let's just see what we get. So let's just run it. Build is successful. Click play. So if I were to die, takes us to the game over state. Game over state is a bit bland at the moment. So we're gonna start doing the basics of that. This will be spread over a few videos. Will be where we will be saving score, adding score, all of that good stuff. So what you want to do is go to your game over state .hpp. All of these methods there find us fantastic. We want a background, that's good, but we also want a sprite, or sprites I should say, for the game over title. We want sprites for the game over container or game over body, they're the same thing. And then we want a sprite for retry button as well. So this, the retry button will essentially be the same as the play button. That's what it will be. So now, if we go to our CPP file, so game over state, CPP, close this down, so we've got a bit more real estate to work with. Let's load in some assets. So we're going to be loading in the game over title. That's what we're going to be calling it. We're going to so select the game over title file path. This is going to be game over body. This is going to be game underscore over body file path. Now we're gonna set the textures. So if we just duplicate this a few times, we need three more instances because we're gonna be doing it for the game over title. We're gonna be doing it for the game over container, which is the body. And we're gonna be doing it for the retry button. Retry button will just be using a play button texture. You could load the other separate texture, but as this is probably something that you'll keep consistent throughout the application, less likely to change. I did unload it in as a separate texture with a separate name. So for this, we've got get texture, and this should be game over title. This should be game over body. And this is going to be play button or whatever you called it in the video where we actually created and added the play button to our asset manager and used it in the main menu state video. So now we're gonna set the positions. The position for the game over background, that's fine. We need to set the position for the game over container. So let's do that right now. So what we're gonna do is underscore game over container dot set position and for the x value because we are actually going to be centering it in the x and y axis aka centered on the screen we're going to put underscore data window dot get size dot x divided by two we'll enclose all of this in brackets get rid of that extra bracket going to take away half of the game over container width and remember the reason we are doing this is because the origin is in the top left so we we want it centered in the sprite itself so you could either change the origin or just modify the position when you or take it take it into account when you set the position either one is fine the so game over container dot get global bounds dot width divide by two and for the y position we're doing something very similar for the y axis so the only thing that we need to change here are we're getting the height of the window now and we're getting the height of our sprite so now let's set the position for the game over title so dot set position so for the x value, it's going to be very similar. So we can literally just paste that into here and replace this with underscore game over title. And the reason is similar, because we're centering it in the x axis. Before the y axis, what we're going to be doing is just 
having it slightly above the game over container. So what we'll do for the Y position is put underscore game over container. So we're going to get the position of this. So it doesn't matter where we position this. I mean, it doesn't matter where we position the game over container, the game over title will always be above it. So this is a great way of keeping it dynamic. If you want to move this down slightly or up, it will still look all good with everything else. So for this, we are going to get the Y position. We are going to take away the game over title dot get global bounds. So the height of this. I'm going to multiply by 1.2. If we just, let's say, take away the height of the game over title, it'll be literally above the game over container. So it'll be touching. But what I found is if you add 20% more of the game over title height onto it in terms of the offset, it looks a lot better. It just looks a lot cleaner. But you can feel free to experiment with this value and move it closer or further away from the game over container. So now we are going to set the position for the retry button. So retry button dot set position for the x value. Again, it's going to be something very, very similar. What we're going to be doing is setting it centered in the x axis. So we can just copy and paste this code to save some time. And the only thing we need to change is this to underscore retry button. And now for the Y position, what we need to do is underscore game over container dot get position. So we're going to get the Y position. We are actually going to add on the game over container height and the reason for that is remember the origin in terms of the y axis starts at the top we want it at the bottom so we need to get the y position then add the height of the game over container so this will actually position it below it but we what we want to do is add 20 percent more onto it so we can just add the retry button height by getting the global bounds times by not 1.2 because we're not taking it away we're adding it on so it's already positioned at the bottom due to the way the origin is set 0 0.2 like so and that's all the positioning stuff done so if we scroll down we need to handle some input as well so we need to do if this is all stuff that you've done before just checking if a sprite has been clicked underscore data dot actually no window no a window where am i looking for i don't know what the hell is happening i'm looking for input dot is sprite clicked and for the first parameter it's going to be our retry button that's the only sprite that is clickable on here and the event that we're checking for is the mouse left key like so and we need to pass in the window that we're referring to check for this collision. So underscore window, here we go. And in here, if this is true, what we'll do is underscore data. This is essentially the same thing that we did before to get to this state. We will now go to the game state. So we'll put state ref, new game, I need to include so hash include game state .hpp. scroll down back to here so this needs to be game state and we are passing in the underscore data parameter that is getting all over the place they've been used a lot the update method stays the same we don't need to add anything in there and now we just need to add a bunch of window draw calls so underscore data window dot draw and for the first item that we're drawing is the game over container then we are going to draw the game over actually game over title it doesn't really matter but we'll do it in the same order that we created and set the position for just to keep it consistent and this is underscore retry button so now if we run this hopefully there's no errors there isn't fantastic and now if we click play 
and die, we will see the game over screen. So if I click play, die, wait, and it takes us to our awesome game over screen. As you can see, with that little bit of code, we've got a awesome, it says Flappy Birds. That don't sound right to me. So, so game, ah, I'll put game title instead of game over title. We run that, I was gonna say, it should have said game over instead of Flappy Bird. You could have the name of the game there if you wanted to. Totally up to you. And now, it says game over. We have our body, our container, and then we have our retry button. If I click play, we can continue playing our game or retry our game. So if I die over here, see at the moment, if I go to the game over, it doesn't show us our current score, it doesn't have our high score or any medals. We'll be covering that over the next few videos. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. If you want to check out the source code, there will be a link to GitHub with this video. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.